Revelation, for instance, as a very escape to Cornerstone Church of the Acts of the Faith Incorporated, 2516 Halls Mill Road, Mobile, Alabama, 36606. We're excited that you're going to view this video. We ask you to gather your friends and your family around to hear what thus saith the Lord. And if you would like to support this ministry, join us in the work of the Lord, please do so by sending all checks and money orders to True Cornerstone Church, Post Office Box 8836, Mobile, Alabama, 36689-0836. Our weekly services are Sunday school every Sunday at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock a.m., evening worship 6 o'clock p.m. We have our rightly divided word true Bible study every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m., and evangelistic service every Friday night at 7 o'clock p.m. If you're in the mobile area, we encourage you to join us for these worship experiences. Now, listen to this video, listen to what thus saith the Lord, and it will be a blessing to you and your family. Be blessed in Jesus. Good day. Amen. Thank God uh, for every Sunday he allows us to see every day, but this happens to be our day of worship. Amen. Amen. So we're grateful to God for our day of worship, the first day of the week. And consistent with the word of God when the disciples met on the first day of the week. And so our worship day, yesterday was the Sabbath, the day of rest. Amen. None of us rested yesterday. Uh, <laughs> today is the day of worship. Amen. So we come here on the first day of the week to render unto God praise due to him. Amen. 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 We have to <clears throat> understand that that God is calling all of us, all of mankind, back to himself. Amen. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verses 17 through 21. It's time for us to sound this alarm. There are so many souls that are lost and so many people on the way to the lake that burns with fire uh, and brimstone. And we don't want anyone to go that direction. Does not matter their lifestyle, does not matter what they've done, what they're contemplating, who they are, what their orientation is, what their preferences are, whatever the case may be, we have one thing in mind, that is to win souls to Christ. And that's our objective, to win souls to Christ. Amen. We're looking for souls to come to Christ. Amen. Folks are going to church, but they're not coming to Christ. We need souls to come uh, into the body of Christ. And so today I'm going to preach about the gospel of reconciliation. Amen. The gospel of reconciliation. Now, reconciliation is the restoration of friendly relations. Uh, if you have to restore friendly relations, then that means that somebody fell out of uh, favor with each other. And so we're talking uh, the gospel of, of reconciliation, uh, the, re the restoration of friendly relations. Uh, another definition is the action of making one view or belief compatible with another. Uh, another definition is the action of making financial accounts consistent. And then the fourth uh, definition is harmonization. Uh, and so God is looking to reconcile man back to himself. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 21, the Bible reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things.
things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now this is the development of authentic, true, legitimate relationship. Uh, the natural man in your natural state, in your unholy ghost state, your relationship with God uh, is nothing. Your understanding of God is so incomplete, so limited. Uh, and so people's relationship is, oh, let me say a little prayer, you know, and you get in a little trouble, then you might want to turn to God. I know, you know, it's when you need some help. But when old things are passed away, because you are a new creature, old things are passed away and all things are become new. And now your relationship with God is an internal relationship, not an external performance. And so that internal relationship makes your communication with God consistent and constant because he abides on the inside. We call him the Holy Ghost. And, and he abides on the inside. So now, because old things are passed away, you are a new creature. You don't have to sit around and constantly determine, well, should I do this or should I do that? You don't have to count your words. I hope I don't slip up and say the wrong thing. Hope I don't cuss, get mad and do this. No, no, no. Old things yes. are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are not the person you used to be. Not because you have to try to not do old things, but old things are passed away. I don't do them anymore because they are passed away. Now, our problem in today's world is that people struggle with perfection in Christ because old things have not passed away. When the old, when the old man is crucified, he's crucified with his deeds. Not just the old man, but all of his deeds are crucified. And so... The old church testimony of things I used to do, I don't do no more, holds tremendous legitimacy because I don't think the way I used to think. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I am not the man I used to be. I don't do the things I used to do. I don't have to try hard to please God because he abides on the inside. And so he orders my steps. Old things are passed away. The old man, he didn't order my steps. I ordered my own steps. Me and the devil did it together. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. So if your old self is attached to your, your professed new self, then you have a problem. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so the whole purpose of our being saved is not just for ourselves. But we are to win souls to Christ, the ministry of reconciliation. And after you get yourself together, you've got to help somebody else get themselves together. Jesus instructed Peter, said, said listen, once you strengthen, once I'm gone, and you receive the conversion, strengthen the brethren. Yes. We have to strengthen the brethren. There are people who are in need of Christ, and, and we've not... We've not practiced, we've not learned, we've not practiced, we've not put it to, into motion the ministry of reconciliation. We have to be responsible for winning souls to Christ. Not for, not for accumulating church members, but for winning souls to Christ. The restoration of friendly relations. Some of those friends you left out there in the world, you have to be a beacon of light to them. They have to see Christ in you and have the mind to turn from their old wicked 
ways. Now, if your life has changed and you say you love Jesus, then you have a responsibility to demonstrate the love that you say you have for Jesus, the ministry of reconciliation. And so we preach a gospel that, that we want all souls, according to the word of God, according to the will of God, all souls to be saved. We don't preach righteousness for exclusion. We preach righteousness for the purpose of inclusion. Yes, yes, we all right. can live in the righteousness of God because of the sacrifice at Calvary, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and committed unto us the word, the word of reconciliation. And so it is the word of God that makes the difference. And you have to master the word of God. Now all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. They become new because of the word of God. God's word is truth. When you have the truth of God, then you are able to impart a new way of thinking to others. But you have to master this way. And I'm not talking about uh, because you are so articulate. Firstly, your lifestyle has to reflect that of a righteous man. If it is not a righteous lifestyle, then it is not a godly right. lifestyle. Amen. And when there is no godly lifestyle, you cannot win souls to Christ. That's right. You can recruit folks to church, but you cannot win them to the body of Christ. And so uh, we have to focus again on the gospel of reconciliation. The gospel of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now when we are, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And so Christ left us as witnesses, as recruiters, yes, if you will. That's right. Amen. We are to share the goodness of the Lord. Amen. It's, it's dangerous when we can never share the good news of Jesus Christ and say we are members of his body. Yes. Oh, Lord. It seems to me in the body, you want to share the goodness of the body. He didn't save us to go into a corner and keep to our cells. That's right. He saved us that we might go and win souls to him. Man is lost. He saved us and he found us. And we need to put other folks in, in the position where he can find them too. And if you are not out, and I'm not talking about talk, walking the streets and with tracks here. Yeah, and that's nothing, that's good too. That, that's part of it. But there is a testimony that you ought to have. And your testimony Hallelujah. begins with your life That's right. style. That's right. People see Christ through you. Yes. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Look at the love of God. And so we've been reconciled back to God, which means that we were once severely severed uh, 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 from God. We were separated from his presence. We were separated from his righteousness. We were never, no longer a part of his truth, nor of his holiness, and certainly not of his glory. But thank God that he's a God of reconciliation. And so the absence of relationship inhibits communication and prevents understanding, making it impossible for one to get back to God, for one to become submissive to God. You cannot submit yourself to someone who you do not respect. It is difficult, this is why so many people struggle with, 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 with coming to Christ, because they have no respect for him. And that's a shame. But it was in the garden where man lost respect for God and had a conversation yes, yes, with yes. the spirit that was contrary to yes. the will of God. Yes. In our lives, we have conversations with spirits Jesus, that are contradictory Lord. to the mission of Christ. He is our holiness and he is our righteousness. When we contemplate anything less than holiness and righteousness, we're not walking in the spirit. But we are fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And we ought not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so 
We were seeking to be reconciled back to God. We're seeking to win souls to be reconciled back to God. Hence, we share the gospel of reconciliation. Now, John writes that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And the purpose was for reconciliation, making it a possibility through the shedding of his blood at Calvary. And we know his name is Jesus. And so the only path to reconciliation is through Jesus Christ. If you don't come through Jesus, there is no reconciliation. Now, now this was a hard thing for the early church to understand. They didn't have it because they didn't have the benefit of the written word nor their experiences. But in the words of Jesus in John chapter 14, verse number 6, he's, a, he's re responding to, to a, a Thomas. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And so the door to reconciliation, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Yes. And so we have to preach Jesus and him crucified. Someone has to know that Jesus is always standing in the gap for us. He is our mediator. He is the one who came, not just an atonement, but he is our propitiation. Yeah. And we have to appreciate this because all of the sin that we were once guilty of before we received the gift of the Holy Ghost, God looked and saw the filth in us, but he was not offended. His heart was touched, and he wanted to change man back to the state of holiness in which he created both Adam and Eve. He created them perfect beings to live forever in righteousness. But they disobeyed God as we consistently and constantly today disobey God. But I thank God that he made a path for all of us to get back to him. The gospel yes. of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Now understand, when God does, he does all things decently and in Lord, Lord. order. And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 14 and 40 that all things be done decently and in order. And so God is a God of order. He's a God of structure. And so Jesus is not somebody who just, who just comes along and whatever happens, happens to him. He had a plan. He had a plan. The plan was before the foundation of the world. God never intended, he never willed for man to fall. But God knew from the beginning that man was going to be disobedient. And so he understood from the very beginning he had to put in place a plan of redemption to reconcile man back to himself. And so from the Garden of Eden up to the present time, God has observed and constantly forgiven the transgressions of man methodically and systematically availing opportunities for reconciliation man rebels but God redeems man disobeys but God reconciles and from the disobedience of man from the beginning up to the giving of the law God realized that man's only route to redemption would have to come through the shedding of his blood, his only, the blood of his only begotten son. Uh, and God has perpetually exempted man from the rules that he could never seem to obey, instituting new systems in order as a result and as a reflection of his love for us. He's worked with us from the very beginning. And guess what? God is still working with us. Uh, he's, he's demonstrating tremendous patience in working with us. So many of us are hard-headed and oh, rebellious and stiff-necked, and, and we reject Jesus. everything that God orders through his written word. We don't want to do what God says, but God demonstrates grace and mercy. Yeah, he does. Patience with us. Jesus. He is attempting to reconcile us back to yes, himself. Yes, and so God has made it possible for all of mankind to reign eternally with him in what is called the seventh, the final dispensation of time, identified as um, kingdom reign. And so from the very first 
dispensation of the dispensation of innocence where, where God created Adam and Eve and they were perfect creatures and, and, and then they walked out of innocence and they developed a conscience and through their disobedience they fell from grace and so from the fall of man uh, to Noah we have the dispensation of conscience and, and, and then God looked at man again trying to reconcile man back to himself. Here he brings on a new dispensation of human government from Noah to Abraham. And so the whole the whole point of, 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 of God dealing with man, we're talking about dispensations, is God exempts man from rules all of these times. And he, he brings about a new rule to try to better facilitate relationship yeah, 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 with yeah, man, yeah, yeah. attempting all the time to reconcile man back to himself. But man, for some reason, wasn't hearing any of that. And so after human government, then we see Abraham come on the scene. Uh, and, and from the period of Abraham to Moses is the period of promise. God had destroyed the earth. God had developed a special relationship uh, with the Jews. And God used and spoke with and dealt with Abraham, who was all of our father. And so he made him promises. And he, and he promised the blessings. But man just wasn't happy with that. He continued disobeying God. And, and so God saw a young fella named Moses who was raised in the kingdom of the Egyptian king. But he was raised as a king to be a servant to God. And, and God saw Moses and, and he gave man what we call the law. And through Moses, God gave man specific instructions concerning what to and what to not do. Simple. Just do what I say. You'll be blessed. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be cursed. Well, man's rebellion again chose to be disobedient, to, to ignore the righteousness of God. And, and he suffered many trials as a result. And so the law just could not do it. Paul writes in Romans for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. The law was weak. And so God looked down on man and had mercy on man once again. And he came this time, and he came to make things right for sure, finally and forever. And so we enter a dispensation, what we call the sixth dispensation of grace. And so at Christ, Lord have mercy, God demonstrated his grace. He came, wrapped himself in flesh, and he died at Calvary before our sins. And so we presently live in the sixth dispensation of grace, yes. where we are beneficiaries of the mercy of God. How dare we sit on our hands and not share this good news with the world. The, the gospel Hallelujah. of reconciliation. Yes, the gospel is the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's all good news. Even when it looked bad, it was all good news. From the very beginning, Jesus had the testimony that all things work together for good. And when Pharaoh tried to kill him, oh God, when he was first born, all worked together for good. And when there was nowhere for Mary to deliver the baby, guess what? It all worked together for good. And ultimately, man, man came and crucified Jesus and thought that he had defeated Jesus. But there's something about the death of Jesus that made it possible for all of us to live. Oh, the gospel of reconciliation was born. And we have a good story to, to share with the dying souls in the world. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten yes, yes, son. Yes, yes. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank We're you. looking for the everlasting life and the seventh of dispensation of time, the dispensation of kingdom reign. All of us wants to hear God say, well done, that good and faithful servant. 
enter into the joy of your Lord. We want to reign eternally with Christ in peace, yes, yes. in glory. That is our objective. And, and I know folks always say, if I had to go by myself, I go. Lord, I want to go, but I don't want to go by myself. Oh, yeah. There is nobody that I can think of who I don't want to go with me to heaven. We all need to go to that special place with God to live eternally with him in peace. Lord, have mercy. And if you have not internalized that thought, then you have not been born again. There is no way that life can live in you and you don't want life to be shared with others. It is impossible. If the life lives in you, Jesus Christ lives in you, you have to want to share him with someone else. Yes. The whole purpose of his coming was to redeem man back to himself. How can we sit on such a hot message that he came to redeem us back? to himself. He made it possible for all of us to get back to him in righteousness. And so he came to reconcile man unto himself. And the first item is the restoration of friendly relations. That's what God came to do when he came and wrapped himself in flesh. And of course his name is Jesus. Now from the very beginning in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove man, he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword was turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Look at the mercy of God. God didn't allow man to be to be sealed eternally in unrighteousness. And if man had eaten of the tree of life, then he would have lived eternally in unrighteousness. And so God's grace and God's mercy yes. was demonstrated from the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls and the air, for it repented me that I have made them. Now, I've never seen this like this. God didn't just get, he wasn't just upset with the fact that he created man, but every creeping thing, the fowls, everything that God created, God wanted to destroy all of it. Now, listen, the highest order of creation is man. And the Bible says that evil communication corrupt good manners. And so it is the sin of man that made animals evil. They were not like that from the beginning. And there's a reason you have man against the snake and against the lion and against the wolf because of sin. And God saw the devastation of disobedience. The man wallowing in sin and how that sin infected all creation. Lord have mercy. It became so awful until ultimately God would have to send rain on the earth. Lord to water the earth. And so man just destroyed all of the purity of God. And we have to process this because God becomes so offended by our sinful lifestyles. We are unnecessarily wallowing in sin when we don't have to. He made a way for all of us out of sin. The, the way of reconciliation has been made already. We have no excuse to continue playing in the gutters of sin. We get to Genesis chapter number 9, verses 8 through 13. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cow, and of every beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And so here the covenant is also not just made with man, but with all living creatures. And I will establish my covenant with you. Uh, neither shall I all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any uh, be any more of a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me 
and the earth. And so we love to sing about the rainbow. We love to see the rainbow. We don't appreciate what it signifies. It is the grace right. and the mercy right. of God. Right God repented that he had sent the flood to destroy all mankind. Look at his grace. Look at his mercy. Yes, Look at his Lord. love. Look at his patience. Look at his long suffering. And man continued to, to disobey and ignore God. Man continued to not appreciate um, the goodness of the Lord. Now don't look at them funny because we do the same thing today and we know the whole story from the very beginning. We know the beginning and the end. They didn't know the end. They were living it. So we, are, we have the benefit of knowing all of it and we still disobey God. We, we, we get to Exodus chapter 2, verse 22 to 25. And it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died in the children of Israel's side by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. First of all, they didn't have to be in bondage, but because of their disobedience, yeah. they found themselves in bondage. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect, respect unto them. And so God realized that he had made promise to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And, 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 and even though Israel had rejected God, they rebelled against him, they defied and defiled him, even though they did all of that, God still looked on his people. Hallelujah. And God had mercy Jesus. on his people. Jesus. And God continues today having mercy on his people. Yes, he He's calling men back Himself. But man continues re re rejecting and rebelling against God. And, and now today man wants women marrying women and men marrying men. And, and we want to do all kinds of evil things. And we want to have sin reigning in the house of God. Saying God is in operation. But there's all kinds of sinful lifestyles practiced in the house. And, and there is there is all of this uh, 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 commu uh, communication with the ways of the devil in the house of God. Trying to sell it as well. You know, God, after all, God understands. No, 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 no. There is no more sacrifice for the sin that man is committing because Christ has already come to redeem us back to himself. But man continues practicing ungodliness. All we not have learned from each from, from Israel all the things that they went through, all they endured, and, and we say crazy things like, well, I, if it had been me and I saw God part the Red Sea, I'll tell you, child, I would have Father, no, you would not have her. all of the blessings, all of the grace, the mercy, the miracles that God is performing, saying to us, and we're still walking away from God. But I'm so happy God is not like me. Oh, Lord, I thank you. So happy God is not like man. And so John 3, we, we quote this all the time, everywhere. You see it, you see it written at the ball game, big posters. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the question we have to ask ourselves is do we love God? We know he loves us, but do we love God? If you don't practice righteousness, then you don't love God. Just because your mouth forms the word, say, I love the Lord, does not mean that you love the Lord. If you love him, you will keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. When you love him, you do what he says. You wear what he says to wear. You don't wear what he says to not wear. You go where he says to go. You think what he says to think. When you love him, you keep his commandments. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, it is the trick of the adversary to deceive man into thinking that God is against him or the messenger of God is against man because you preach the gospel reconciliation. Now, if there is no righteousness, there is no reconciliation. And so from the very beginning, if you're going to talk about a preacher or teach about the gospel, but there's no righteousness that it is not the gospel. The whole purpose of Christ's coming was to reconcile man back to himself. That was 
to get rid of sin and to usher in the righteousness of God. But the adversary, he deceives man into believing that when you when you preach and teach against sin, that somehow you don't love him. You, that, that, that preacher hates me because he preaches about what I'm doing. No, that demonstrates love for you. When your sins are exposed, God always exposed the sins of man. Man never had to scratch his head trying to figure out what God was saying. God always made it clear concerning the sins of men. And guess what? He's still doing the same. Men were offended by God. crawling them on the carpet back then, and he's still offended today. And so we try to make all kinds of excuses and, and exceptions to do what we want to do. But today, the gospel of reconciliation, I got to tell you, you can't do what you want to do. You got to do what God tells you to do. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has believed in he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. When you are born again, you never become complacent with imperfection. Anything about you that you know is not up to par, up to God's level, you don't want it to be part of you. You always want to be in the place where God is pleased with you. And God is pleased with righteousness. And we try to change the rules as if we are right. Mm -hmm. And some of us think that we're doing God a favor by living holy. We get it in our minds that it's about us. No, it is about Christ. It is about him. The whole gospel of reconciliation, it is, he was so gracious and so loving and so kind of, and, 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 and thoughtful and patient until he came and he died for our sins. So not for us to continue doing the things that we used to do, but to do what he says. And so we're not doing God a favor by living living for him. Yes. No, the favor has been done yes. to us. Yes. In Jesus. fact, we could not live holy if it were not for God. If it were not for him wrapping himself in the flesh and coming and dying for us and redeeming back up to himself, we could not live holy. It was a tempting and man kept breaking the rules. Jesus. Man kept denying God. Yes. Man kept defying yes. God. Man kept defiling the uh -huh. holiness of God. People come to God's house these days and acting like they're doing God or doing God's church some kind of favor. Like y'all ought to be happy that I'm here. Look at it. Yeah, I, I might come again. Well, that's up to you. But you don't have to. God's not begging us. He's pleading with us, but he's not begging us. And, and so it's gotten to the place where people exempt, they, 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 they exempt themselves from the righteousness of God, thinking I can do what I want because this is the way I see it. Well, let me help you out with that. But you are not exempt. None of us is exempt. And, and people come to the church and they say they come to God, but they come to the church really, and they expect to be begged to come back to church. And, and, and many church folks have made the mistake of appearing to folks like, you know, oh, they're Jesus, beggars. Yes, uh, nobody's begging you to come. I love you so much until I don't want you to be lost. That's, right. That's why I want you That's right. to come. That's right. It is the move of God that I want you to experience. Because the move of God changes Hallelujah. your yes, mind. And, and so it has everything to do with salvation. But if you don't want this, nothing I can do for you. Right. And so all God is trying to do is restore friendly relations. Now, the second definition is action of making one view or belief compatible with another. Look at Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6, 7, and 8. To seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and let the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. The action of making one of your belief compatible with another. Now, 
We're not looking, hopefully, not looking for God to come and, 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 and compromise with us. Right. Lord have mercy. But we have to go to God to get right with him. Ain't that all right? Yeah. We have to make sure that we are not defiling the holiness of God. And, and so we are instructed to come and let us reason together with God, not with each other, but really come let us reason together. God is telling us, come, let us reason. Here, uh, that, and this is found in Isaiah. Come, let, 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 you, let, um, let, let me let you hear the message that I'm giving to you. See, you're messed up, and, and I, sit, I sit on high. I'm God, and I'm holy, and I want you to be holy from the very beginning. I wanted you to be holy. I wanted you to be perfect, and you've chosen an inferior level of living. And so let's come now. Come, come, come. Let us reason together. Let's get this thing all back to Together. But no, 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 man does not want that. Man wants to continue just wilding in sin and doing what he wants to do. Well, that is a huge mistake. It's such a huge mistake until it will cost you your life. And so we have folks who say that they have been reconciled, but their lifestyles do not rec do not represent reconciliation. If your lifestyle doesn't reflect reconciliation, that you've not been reconciled. And the only reason you've not been reconciled because yes. you've chosen to not be reconciled. The whole purpose of Christ coming Come was to reconcile man Lord. back to God. That was the whole purpose. If you are outside of the body of Christ, that's your choice. God is not keeping any of us from him. We're keeping ourselves from him. And so we are instructed again, again, and look at it now, again, the second one, we are looking at some, the action of making one view of belief compatible with another. The whole point of it is drop your belief, drop your perspective, drop your opinion. The question is, Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to think? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, Romans 12, one, by the mercy of God, to present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your, your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and accept the perfect will of God. And so, here, you got to drop your, your beliefs. you got to drop your perspective, your point of view. And you have to fervently seek to please God. Lord, I will live for you. Whatever you tell me to do, I will do what you say. Don't do, I will not do. Because I have to make sure that I'm, I am living according to your word, according to your will, according to your instruction, your direction, your inspiration. One thing about love about God, he doesn't tell you what to do and to leave you helpless. He chose us. He, he instructs us to live holy, then he gives us the Holy Ghost so we can live holy. Ain't that all right? He doesn't just tell you where to go. He takes you there. Amen. If you're following him, he's taking you right there to the holy place. Amen. But so many of us don't want to follow him because we're going to do it well, the way I Jesus. see it, the yeah. way I think. Uh, uh, be not conformed to this world, oh. but ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind and make prove Jesus. what is that good and acceptable for the will of yeah. God. Yeah. I'm not trying to prove what is my will, what's good about me, because in me that is in my flesh well no good thing. My purpose has to be to please God. And so my lifestyle has to be consistent with the holiness of God or I am falling short. The, the reconciliation, I've got to get away from my beliefs. God, you give me your beliefs. Uh -huh. And when you walk in the beliefs of God, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That's Romans 8 and 1. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. And so I've reconciled this thing. I've forgotten about my beliefs. I've shaken those things off. Jesus, I'm God. looking to please God. God will say, Lord, for you I live, for you I die. Now folks say it, but they don't live it. Because as soon as adversity comes, a challenge comes, they change their minds. But when you purpose in your heart to live for Christ, there is therefore no condemnation because we are in Christ Jesus. We don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit, after the Holy Ghost. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Well, can't nobody live that lifestyle right because you've not been set free by the Holy Ghost. I've 
been liberated from a lifestyle of sin. And when the old man tries to raise old, ugly, filthy, good for nothing, low down head, it is the Holy Ghost that lifts up my standard. It is the Word of God that is my banner. He is my weapon in the midst of every test and trial. When I it seemed like the enemy has kind of destroyed me, but because of the word of God, I've applied it. It's a light unto my feet. It's a light unto my path. I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against him. And so the old man does not have to live again for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, I just can't stop right because you're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit. When you are born again, you no longer walk after the flesh. You've been reconciled to God. And so now when I was born this way, that's why you need to be born again. Well, I was born gay. Then you need to be born again. I was born lesbian. Then you need to be born again. I was born a liar. You need to be born again. I was born a whoremonger. Well, let me help you. You need to be born again. Oh, Lord. All things are passed away when you are born again. And behold, all things are become new because you've been born again. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It's the spirit that giveth life. So when you walk in the spirit, according to Paul in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Not when you walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you believe in perfection. Oh, yes. When you walk in the spirit, you don't constantly walk around making mistakes, doing the wrong thing, thinking the wrong thing, going the wrong places, wearing the wrong thing, hanging with the wrong folks. No, no, no. I'm walking in the spirit. And the spirit told me don't do it. So I don't do it. When the spirit speaks, now listen, now listen, listen, because sometimes it's a struggle. It's a struggle sometimes. And be not conformed to this world, but you transfer the room of your mind. And so your mind has to be renewed. But but when you go before that, I beseech thee for brother by the mercy of God to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice is not something easy. Uh, a sacrifice is something difficult to do. Uh, and so there's some things that you were in love with in your sense. Uh, and some of that stuff, uh, it may try to creep back up on you. Uh, but you presented your body a living Jesus, sacrifice. Uh, all of me is a living sacrifice. Uh, wholly acceptable to God. And that's only reasonable. After all, he created us in perfection uh, from the very beginning. He came to reconcile us back original state of perfection. And so it seems reasonable to me for me to present my body to him a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to him. And that ain't nothing but my reasonable service. And I cannot be conformed to this world. And so how do you how do you live this holy life? Reject the ways of the world. And be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by renewing of your mind. You have to have a renewed mind. The renewed, the renewed mind comes through relationship with Christ. It is the Holy Ghost that gives you that new mind. Void of the new mind. You will not live holy. You cannot live holy. You might do it for a minute, but the old man will show up again and do the old things because you are living under the law of sin and the death. But I'm concerned that the righteousness of God be reflected in my lifestyle, in my priorities, in, in all that I do, that I think, that I say, that I wear, that I go, and all, everybody I deal with, that the righteousness of God may exude from my Holy Ghost pores. Lord have mercy. And this thing ain't hard. Jesus writes in, uh, says in John 14 and 15, he said, now if, if you love me, keep my Commandments. If you love me, keep my command. I love the Lord. If you love me, keep my commandments. 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Well, he's here. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Well, he's come. He's in us. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Ain't that something? He, to, he didn't leave us comfortless. He has come to us in a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live. You shall live also. And so the Holy Ghost abides on the inside. That's the gospel of reconciliation. The whole purpose of Jesus coming was to reconcile us back to himself. But I can't help it. You're right. You can. I'm going to have to get out. But Jesus can. The Holy Ghost can. And the Holy Ghost will if you allow him to do. But if you don't allow him, you cannot. He will not. He's not going to be a bully and come and make you live holy. You can only live holy if you want to live holy. Any of us who wants to live holy has been facilitated already. Oh, Lord. Over 2,000 years ago, when the Holy Ghost fell, Jesus sent on high. And he, he kept the promise. Here in John 14, he kept the promise. Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. The spirit of truth abides on the inside. The spirit of truth compels me to do what thus saith the Lord. No, 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 I don't want to do worldly things. Sorry. Doesn't bother me to not do worldly things and not go worldly places. Sorry. I'm not trying to be like the world. Sorry. Doesn't offend me on, because God. I'm not doing worldly stuff. Doesn't bother me at all. My life is hit with Christ in God. I'm happy to be born again. I'm pleased to walk in the spirit to not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has made me free from the law of sin and death. So I've been freed. Why should I go back to bondage? The gospel of reconciliation. And so there we have the action of making financial accounts consistent oh, yeah. as one of the definitions of reconciliation. Uh, it's like, you know what? It's time for us to pay up, y'all. Oh, yes. I think the song goes, he owed, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. Lord, I owed a debt I could not pay, but Jesus paid the, the debt. And so the financial accounts, the accounts have been paid in full at Calvary. But you have to do what he says. You have to repent of your sins. You have to go down in the water, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You must receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the honorable witness of speaking in tongues. When the evidence of a sanctified lifestyle, because I've got to get my account straight, it's time for us to pay up. God kept his word by reconciling man unto himself through a painful, a gory, a bloody, a merciless cross experience. And then we went, what are you waiting for? Why are you waiting to come to Christ? He paid the price. All you got to do is accept the bill. When somebody walks in a restaurant, then you go to the register and you go to the waiter and, you, and they give you a bill and they say, oh, no, 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 it's paid in full. You don't say, oh, oh, I'm going to pay it myself. When, you, when someone pays it for you, you are thankful they paid it for you. And now man says, pay it forward. If someone's done something good for you, you do something good for somebody else. It's time to pay up, baby. It's time to repent of your sins. It's time to be born again of water and of the spirits. Otherwise, you cannot see the kingdom of God. It's time for the old man to be crucified with his deeds. And that is called reconciliation. It's time to get all of your accounts together because the day of reckoning is coming. You're going to die soon. Well, Christ is going to come either way. You're going to be gone from this earth. And the question you must ask yourself is where will I spend eternity? So what are you waiting for? From the very beginning, all that God required of man was to be holy. Is that so hard to be holy? For I am holy. He made us in his image and his likeness. Lord have mercy. Then he came all the way down, redeemed us back to himself so we can be in his image and his likeness. We can be holy. There's something about the Holy Ghost that helps 
to drop your sinful lifestyle. Be not the to this world. Be transformed by renewing of your yeah. mind. My mind, my mind, yeah. my mind is made up. I decide Hallelujah. to follow Jesus. Jesus. Yes, I make Lord. Jesus my choice. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do what thus said the Lord. Yeah. He told us from the very beginning Hallelujah. to simply obey him. Do what he says. Now, now, now folks want to argue with this, and that's fine with me, but, but let us hear the conclusion of, of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For well, this is the whole duty of man. Right Fear now. God and that's keep his right commandments. Now. Not man's ways, not the pastor's ways. Fear God and keep his commandments. Yes. Do what God says. If Pastor Gandy walks out of God, you better stay in him. Do what this is the whole oh, do you yeah. mean to fear God and keep God's commandments yes, and Jesus already said his commandments are not grievous yeah. it's easy to walk in the ways of God what is difficult is be a transgressor the way of a transgressor is hard but Jesus says my yoke is easy and my burdens they are light so what are you waiting for it's time to pay up baby you got to pay Wow. Now either you're going to receive reward or you're going to receive punishment. Either way, it's coming. So from the very beginning, in, in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. We got folk practicing wicked ways and talking about they have the favor of God. There's no favor on your life. If you are practicing sin, there's no favor on your life. I don't care what you think you have. There are atheists with stuff. Billionaires and millionaires. What's the big deal if you have not been born again? Does not matter how wealthy you are, how pretty you are, how smart you are, how tough you are, how big and bad you are. You will spend eternity in the lake, burn the fire and burn stone. And so it is the gospel of reconciliation. If my people which are called by names, humble themselves and pray and see my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, my eyes shall be there, shall be open. And my ears are tender to the prayer that is made in this place. Listen, now the holy place is not the structure, but it's on the inside. If I present my body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, he hears my prayer. Lord, I thank you. Uh -huh. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears are tent unto thy prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen to sanctify this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. Oh God, I'm never alone because of the grace and the mercy of God. And as long as I am committed to the righteousness of God, I will never walk out of his presence. If my people which are called by my name, well, whose name are you called by? And who are you obeying? And as for thee, if thou will walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. If we do what God says, he can keep his promises. Yes, now listen. If you don't obey him, you can't receive the blessings of God. Yeah, he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. Don't get it confused, baby. God requires holiness. But if he turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I put them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them, and this house which I have sacrificed for my name will I cast out of my sight. It will 
make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus unto this land and unto this house? God is beginning in this day and age to show his hand. He's revealing false prophets and false church to false people in this time. And so many, read, read the papers, watch the news, listen. So many things going on because people are misrepresenting the righteousness of God. You can't hide sin behind the cross. Mm -mm. The sin is destroyed. It's, it no longer exists. And as long as you are practicing sin, you are not a member of the body of Christ with your struggling self. Oh no, baby. We've been reconciled already. We don't have to live lifestyles of sin. No. If you continue walking in sin, and this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passed by it, to, 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 so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshiped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Yeah. You change, baby. And you're going to pay for the change. You can't change. We got called you out of sin. You've got to stay out of sin. Come here from among them and be ye separate. Put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. Now, I know you think you're getting away, but listen, God is the boss. He's the ruler. He is the one. Ezekiel 18 and 4 says, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, the question is, is your soul sinning? Well, if your flesh can't stop sinning, then your soul is sinning. Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And the treasure of your soul, if it's in Christ, then your body, your heart does not follow sinful things. Will not practice sinful lifestyles. Uh -huh. And so we got to be careful accepting all the excuses of sin. You can't sit around and try to excuse your own sin. Well, I got my faults, they got theirs. And you know the folks don't want to live on. The moment you talk about sin, they tell me about what somebody else is doing. I ain't stopping nobody else is doing. If God shows me my sin. I'm not trying to see your sin. I'm trying to see my sin. Your sin cannot keep me out of heaven, but my sin can. Yeah. Regardless of what, what you do can't keep me out of heaven, but what I do or do not do can't keep me out of the presence of God. So I don't have any interest. Well, you can't criticize me because no. Mm -mm. If I'm wrong, I just want to be right. I just want to do right. I just want to live right. I just want to talk right. I just want to walk right. So my pursuit of righteousness supersedes any criticism, whether I think it's fair or not. I couldn't care less. What I care about is that when, if someone says something negative, it's untrue. But if it's true, I gotta get right with God. No sense me getting mad with you. But why you know, no, 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 I ain't studying you. Thanks for showing me. You might have had bad intentions. But whatever the reason you shared or you exposed me, I thank God I've got a chance to get right with him. I don't have to stay in my sins. Why am I going to get mad when somebody shows me that I'm not walking rightly before God? God, when they show me and they show me to the word that I'm wrong, the Holy Ghost convicts you when you feel what to get the Holy Ghost and he compels you to get right but if you don't get right then you will walk out of obedience to God and no disobedient person will be in heaven pray that for yourself yes. so we gotta be careful y'all we gotta be careful because the enemy comes to kill, to steal and to destroy, yeah people receive blessings uh, they, they receive the grace and the mercy of God, uh, but then they turn around and reject the living God. I'm not going to live like by what like God says. I ain't thinking about nobody's holy standard. I was in trouble, and God, he blessed me, helped me, he healed me. Then you return to a lifestyle of sin. There's something wrong with you. They're deceived into believing that it's some goodness of their own. Or, may, or, may, or maybe, you know what, Jesus is not paying attention. How about that? He's asleep. 
He's not really watching me. He's watching everybody else. I can do what I want to do. So come to church, say I'm saved, and, and speak in some kind of tongue and run around. Yeah. And him, but he's not paying attention. Or maybe I'm exempt from that. And then because, because I'm so blessed, I can live however I want. I'm going to heaven anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, you can think that. <laughs> but let me tell you something. <laughs> Jesus sees all of us. Now, he, he calls the Son. He reigns on the just and on the unjust. God sent her that rain. God sent her the rain on the just, on the unjust. I told you he's got a reconciliation. Jesus. He still reigns on the unjust. As long as you can understand this, you have a chance to get right with God. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just hoping that we've not forgotten the gospel reconciliation, that we've not forgotten that, that, that God, that, that he is able and willing but remember this now. Jesus says to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, except the man be born again of water of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Who shall believe who shall not perish with everlasting life? Everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yeah. We all must be saved. And finally, Hallelujah. reconciliation, the fourth definition I gave, harmonization. Yeah. First Corinthians 12 and 12. Everybody get there. First Corinthians 12. Since Jim, I want you to read this. First Corinthians 12 and 12. Understand now, God sees us. <clears throat> Jesus loves all of us. He loves us. From the very beginning, he loved us. He's so awesome until he extended salvation to all mankind, not just to the Jews, but to all mankind. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And we still turn our backs on him. Let's, let's see what the Bible says, because we, we, we have to become harmonized in the body of Christ. We have to be reconciled with Christ. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to do it together. You can't do your thing and I do mine. We have to work together. We have to look out for one another. We have to make sure that we are keeping each other honest in the sight of God. We have to serve as each other's conscience before God. You can't see your brother or sister in a fault <clears throat> and not go with spirit of reconciliation. Now, I ain't talking about gossiping and going and I'm talking about you want them to give up. You got you to gotta understand how they hear. You have, to, you have to effectuate change in their lives through the word of God. The will of God, the ways of God, the inspiration movement of God. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one uh -huh. and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. You read it. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now has God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if there were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more than those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, un upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no, no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one, and whether one member suffer, 
all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body, body of Christ, and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. That's, a, that's not right there. And so if we're going to be reconciled, we have to use all that God yes. has given us. Yes. You cannot be saved unto yourself. Jesus. You can't do it. Yes. We're saved to share this good news Amen. of Jesus Christ. Not what we can't do, we can't go, we can't wear, none of that. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. One thing about it, I believe this, I know this according to the word of God. When you are born again, you hear the voice of your father. And the stranger you won't follow. And so our objective is to communicate the rights to God in terms of reconciliation. To share this good news. Yes. Come, hear the word. Come. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come, receive more of that Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Come, receive yes. the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Jesus. And watch God seal yes, you. Lord. In righteousness. Jesus. That is the gospel of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Video, and we hope you receive what God was imparting to you in this uh, video and this message. And we look forward to seeing your face at 2516 Halls Mobile, Mobile, Alabama, 36606. Now listen, if you need to call Pastor Gannon, just give me a call. 251-591-6679. You can email me at pastor at twocornerstone.org, pastor at twocornerstone.org. We thank you again, and the blessing of God be upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.